name is Sarabjeet Singh Gujral and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel Queen Malika and in today's video we will be discussing about the ideal profile of a grad student which professors are looking for so I will be making this video in two parts in video number one which is this video in video two we will be discussing about what if you don't fulfill these ideal criteria so how to circumvent that we will be discussing in video number two so make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications about the future videos which I will be putting on my YouTube channel. So let's begin with video number one. In this video we will be discussing about ideal profile which any professor would love to have a student. In most of the cases this never happens. So we are here discussing about an ideal situation. Number one the percentage score. So usually what universities want to have students which have more than 80% aggregate in their four years of bachelor's degree. Now this is important, right? So in Canada, it is mandatory for a student to have a four years bachelor's degree. If you have done a bachelor's degree, which is three years of uh, coursework, which you know in India, it is very common to have a three years bachelor degree. You are not eligible for a master's there, right? So for that, you need to have a four years bachelor's degree and ideally a student needs to score more than 80%. Well, 80% doesn't, you know, sounds like too much of a high marking, but in Indian universities, because the marking is so strict, getting 80% or above 80% is very tough. I never scored 80%, so I do not fit into this criteria, but still I got into the master's program at the University of Waterloo. So this is an ideal situation where university wants the students or upcoming grad students have more than 80% marks. So this is a very flexible situation. But in some cases, if you have any of the other points which are putting more core to your profile, this can be overlooked. Number two, IELTS. Your English scores are very important for you to get admission into any of the graduate programs. Now. What happens, most universities say that they will not accept anything less than 7% of aggregate or 7 bands, less than 7 bands aggregate in IELTS and none of the components, the 4 components of IELTS basically, you shouldn't score less than 6.5. So 7 is the average and nothing less than 6.5. So this is the usual IELTS uh, score which they need. Also, most uh, professors need their students to have some kind of research experience. Also, from that same research experience, they expect students to have one or two research publications. And then a strong LOR, which is the letter of recommendation from your current professors who are teaching you or with whom you are doing any type of research work. And then a strong letter of intent. Why you want to get admission into a master's program or why you want to take admissions into a PhD program in a particular university. You need to have a very strong letter of intent. So this is the basic requirement of an application for admissions to any of the graduate programs in any of the university. In the North Americas, I will say, Canada and US. So this is the basic profile, right? Now, in USA, you need to have a GRE score. So that's an important uh, stuff to know. The, the main difference between admissions in the Canada and uh, US. So in US, most universities need GRE. In Canada, not many uh, universities need you to have a GRE score. But in some cases, especially for an MBA program, they require for the students to have a good GRE score. So this is an ideal situation. So basically, these are the requirements which the universities look for. Now, the situation is most of the time, these criteria are not fulfilled by the students. So there are number of things which you can do to overcome if you have if you have one or two you know less points in any of these points which we have discussed so in video number two we will be discussing about what if you don't come closer to an ideal profile 
there are number of things which you can do right if you do not have an ideal profile which we have just discussed so if you are one of those students because guess what i am one of those students as well if you are one of those students who do not fit into what i have discussed in an ideal profile you can wait for video number 2 where we will be discussing lots of different points which you can do to overcome the drawbacks and you know have more weightage to your profile so if you need that information make sure of course what to do you just subscribe to my channel write down below your experiences and what you have any questions for me i will be more than happy to answer you all so this is video number 1 now you have to wait for video number 2 because we will be discussing in lot more details about what if you don't have these so that is way more important than video number 1 so thank you so much for watching this video i will see you in the next video which will be video number 2 coming in like 2 or 3 days so thank you very much and i'll see you soon